Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to On Air with your host, Michael Chestnut. And I'm here today with Stephanie Jordan. Stephanie, thank you so much for being with us today. Stephanie is an author. She wrote a book called Believing in Boundaries, which is a great subject for us to talk about today because that is something a lot of people have problems with. I know like for me, Stephanie, I, so I was, I brought, I was brought up a preacher's child. And so there was no boundaries. We, we grew up to be doormats, you know, and I had to learn boundaries, but the problem was I didn't learn that till way later in my life. And honestly, boundaries are healthy. See, I always saw boundaries as something not healthy, you know, that it was limiting, but that's, that's not the case. And we all need boundaries in our life. So I am really excited about our conversation today and your story and what you would like to share with us. So Stephanie, we're, we're intentional guy. We have this, I'm intentional guy. So we have females, everybody that watches us, but my life was in chaos and mess. And God gave me this word intentional. And honestly, when I became intentional, I had to start focusing on boundaries because without boundaries, uh, life can take over. Other people can take over. Other agendas can take over. And so you have to be very intentional in doing that. So to my listeners here, this is so right on topic of, of what we stand for on, you know, this podcast here. So Stephanie, I'm going to be quiet because I talk way too much sometimes, but I just want to hand it over to you. Tell us a little bit about your story, about your book, and about believing in boundaries. Thanks for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Um, so kind of the same thing with me. I grew up in a Christian home, and I came into adulthood and knew little to nothing about boundaries, healthy relationships, um, or any of that sort of stuff. And um, God has kind of taken me on a 20 plus year journey of learning boundaries, the need for boundaries, the importance for, of boundaries. And one thing God is really teaching me about himself right now is his design, um, his design for us. And, and boundaries are something he designed. Um, just like discipline is God designed, boundaries are God designed. And so they're good for us as Christians and believers and critical for us, really. Um, so I was, um, I owned a salon storefront um, for eight years. Um, and in 2019, I had dreams um, of the salon going dark with my stuff in it. But at the time, I didn't know that it was um, prophetic dreams about the shutdown. And about two weeks into the shutdown, God said, close the salon and start writing. And I was like, oh, no, no, I am not ready to close the salon. I just got a new logo. Like, you know, I got plans. I was painting. I was cleaning. Like I was using the shutdown time to like rejuvenate, you know. And um, a week later, he said, shut down the salon and start writing. And I was like, okay. He said, you're done is what he said. You're done. And I was like, I am so done. And so I called my landlord and um, he offered me a year of free rent. And he said, whatever you need, I'll give you whatever you need to stay. And I was like, no, I'm done. And so I closed my storefront and um, that's when I started writing Believing in Boundaries um, a few months later. And all of this stuff was just pouring out of me. And my, my three focuses are cultural boundaries, which we have been just pushed, constantly pushed against in the last few years, especially. Um relational boundaries because relational uh, relationships are everything. And as Christians yes. and believers, we know we're made for relationship. Right. Right. And so um, how, what does that look like? And then faith practice boundaries um, 
is at the end of my book. So cultural, relational, and faith practice boundaries are really what I um, focus on in my book. Wow. And I, I know boundaries were difficult for me to put in place mm -hmm. for me and for several reasons. Some of just what you said, you know, there's so many different types of boundaries, but also I was always afraid of offending somebody with my boundaries. Yeah. Do you touch base with that any? I, I do. I do talk about that, um, especially as Christians. What you said is um, I call it the doormats are us. Um, kind of mentality. And I talk about that in my book. So one of the things as Christians, one of the scriptures that we are taught as believers is you forgive your brother, you know, 70 times seven, like it's never endless forgiveness, but that is actually not what that scripture says. So I talk about this in my book that to um, forgive your brother 70 times seven, there has to be an act of repentance that comes along with forgiveness. So there again, let's go back to God's design. So God's design for forgiveness comes with repentance. God, just, God doesn't just forgive us of our sins because we're like, okay, God's going to forgive us of our sins. We have to acknowledge that sin, repent from that sin, and then we get forgiveness. So right. it's the same steps for humans. So you don't just forgive people because you're a Christian. There has to be steps of repentance that go along with forgiveness. And so that's where our boundaries really come into place. You set a boundary into place. And then when people cross it, you're like, no, that was a boundary. You don't get to cross it. So you offer forgiveness if there's a repentance, which means that person acknowledges that they hurt you and turns from doing it again, not just for the sake of them being able to treat you however they want to treat you. That is not genuine and it's not the model of God's forgiveness for us. But you also have to give that forgiveness freely. So that means if they repent, you no longer are holding them to pay for something, which is what forgiveness is, right? And you give them ample grace and mercy. And so I do talk about all of that in my book and how um, as Christians, we often get confused that forgiveness means like you just treat us however you want to, like it doesn't matter. And that is not at all what God says. Well, and you, you touched on it on two different things here. One, I, I want to get into forgiveness in a minute, but with the boundaries, I think we have to understand what are boundaries and we have to understand why are we creating a boundary? You know, not, we're not just making boundaries to control. A boundary shouldn't be to control other people. Um, a boundary should be something that per, to me, and ugh, you're going to be the more expert on this. But when I look at boundaries, what I have in place for me are to protect me first off. You know, I, I have some boundaries that protect me. I have boundaries that are relational ship that protects my relationships and other things with that as, as well. None of my boundaries are meant to hurt somebody else. So we have to understand that there's a reason for the boundaries. And I think once we do that and we, we actually put thought to why we have the boundary that we have down and we're not just making a list of things or, you know, I'm making this list because this person over here is this way. No. Right. Why do you need this boundary? What is it? Because I, and why I say it is sometimes I have to be careful because sometimes my selfishness comes in. Right. And sometimes God say, no, I want you to learn something right now. This is you're being selfish. I want you to learn this. And this person, they may be annoying to you. They may be all this other stuff. But guess what? They have a word for me for you. So right. I have to understand that. And, and once I get got to that, it made life a little bit easier for me. It, it goes back to my title, Intentional Guy being intentional in what I'm doing and setting those boundaries. But I think one of the things I want to really push my listeners is, you know, your book says it believing in boundaries, boundaries, if done pro properly and you have a right reason for them, they are, they're going to help you grow in your life as well. 
And right. that's the important part of that boundary is that it protects you, but it also brings growth into your life because now other things are not distracting from you that should be because maybe they're in this time. Like I have a boundary on my devotion time and on my devotional that I do, right? Because that's my time with God. If I don't protect that and do that, where am I going to grow? No. Yeah. Yeah. So I see the importance of it. And I, be, I love the believing in it because I think a lot of people um, are so used to being doormats and they feel guilty for having boundaries yes. and they're not, they're not understanding fully what that boundary is doing for them, why it's important to them. Would you agree? Absolutely. So I talk about like, that's the whole first few chapters of my book um, is why, what are boundaries and why even have them? And um, so what you were talking about is absolutely right. So boundaries are about protecting yourself. It's not about, um, it's not about other people. So when you build a house with a front door and a back door, which is a boundary, you don't think you put the back, the front door or back door in so that it has anything to do with other people. It has to do with you. You put that door in because it's your space. You're keeping your space right. safe. If you put a fence around your yard, you're not doing it for any other reason than to keep your yard designated and safe. Nobody right. gets offended by somebody putting a fence around their yard. And so boundaries. Um, so I talk about that in my book, like nobody is offended when somebody, um, you know, like countries have their lines, you know, and if a country's lines is violated, we expect them to defend that line. Right. And it goes all the way down to, you know, you have nations and cities and, and, states and provinces and all of these things. So we understand physical boundaries for, um, for places, you know, I love speeding past a, a police officer that that's not his jur jurisdiction. Cause I know he can't pull me over. <laughs> <laughs> and so we recognize physical boundaries mm -hmm. all the time. But that's the difficult part with the boundaries that you and I are talking about is that they are intangible. They're not something you can see. And so it's much harder for people to respect them. Um, and so when you set boundaries, like you were talking about with your, your devotional time, um, it doesn't have anything to do with anybody else. You're not telling anybody else that, that, they can't have that time because you don't care about them. You're telling them they can't have that time because you are honoring your relationship with God. It has nothing right. to do with anybody else. Yes. And so when you hold that boundary, here's where the rubber meets the road, right? So you're married, say that your wife consistently comes in and disturbs that devotional time. Well, then she is a boundary crosser. And that is when your boundaries can offend others, when they are boundary crossers. You don't set that boundary because of them, but you may have to hold that boundary because of them. Mm. So that is really like, so God is our number one priority, then our spouses, then our children, and it branches out from there. So if your spouse isn't honoring that time with God, then you have to hold the boundaries with your spouse firmer and until they respect that boundary line. And I, I hope and I'm sure that your wife does respect that boundary because she isn't a boundary crosser. So that is a boundary you've been able to put into place and you have not had to say, look, look, honey, you can't be in this space because she naturally is respecting your boundary. Mm -hmm. here. But it's when people aren't naturally respecting our boundaries that we really have to set the boundary firmly and then begin begin to hold that line. And I like you what see you that said there. so much with parenting, right? Yes. Well, I like that too, because one thing too, we can't assume that everybody knows our boundaries. That's so right. some people, they may be crossing that boundary because they're clueless that you have the, this is that time that you're having. And so communicating 
is not being harsh and it's not being rude. It's saying, hey, I would love to spend time with you. I, I can't during this time because this is this is about the only time each day that I really need to protect this part of my life. Yeah. And so, but I do have, you know, I'll be done at this time or, or whatever, whatever it is, you know, that I think is what's really important because one thing I know as a, as a mover and a shaker, as someone who's trying to help lead people too, we have to, to emulate things. Right. And so one of the best way to emulate is, is by explaining, yeah. Because when other people see you walking that walk, it, it it can fall back on them. That's what's happened with me in my life. I've seen that since I've been more intentional in what I'm doing, I've seen a change not just in me, but in my family's life yeah. as well, right? And so I think it's important sometimes to find a way to share that. Don't assume that – not that everybody needs to know your boundaries – I think, yes, yeah, sometimes there's a times when I can't right now, and that should be respected. But there also are some some things that are important that people, you know, need to reach us. But we also have to be giving a little bit, too. I know that sometimes there's emergencies that come up, and God's not going to be mad at me if I tweak that boundary that day. That's great. You know? That's For legalistic. Me, That's not relational, right? Thank you. Yeah. Correct. And that's what we got to keep in mind because legal, having a legalistic mindset is what trapped me for years. Yeah. And so I love that you just said it because we can't be legalistic with it. But that's if we will walk that walk and share it, we're going to watch other people grow. And I think that's just so, that's so important to what we're, we're trying to accomplish as well. It's not just about us. It's about other people we have relationships with in our lives. Right. Yes. Well, I love like I love the name of your podcast so much, the intentional guy, because being intentional, I think, is is so critical as a believer and as a Christian. And you just what you were talking about, you know, God's not going to be angry because, you know, he's with us every second of our life anyway. Like he's in the midst of everything. And so regardless of whether, um, you know, something comes up and you're not able to meet him in that moment he's still there with you yes. going through so when you get the opportunity to sit down and talk again it's like then you can talk about what all went down and yes. it just makes that relationship richer because he he knows that you're not being neglectful you're you're being relational and um yes. and intentional yeah and and i want to move forward to one, let's talk about what was it? I know you, you gave us a little backstory on it, but I wrote a book too. And I know we write about what's dearest to our heart. So why was this subject so important to you? Um, okay. Yeah. So I touched on the fact that I kind of came into adulthood, not knowing anything about boundaries, but even worse, I didn't know I was a codependent. <laughs> Mm. Um, I didn't even know what that was. Um, so my first husband, I had Holy Spirit conviction not to marry, but I did it anyway. I was 20 years old, 21 years old. And all I cared about was a lot of fun. And we had a lot of fun. And um, he was a raging alcoholic. Mm. Um, but I thought it was something he'd grow out of. Like all my friends drank. We were in the punk rock scene in the 90s right. and all my friends drank and did drugs. I was the only Christian in the scene. Um, I was not the only one. There were other straight edge kids that didn't drink and do drugs. So I wasn't the only one that didn't party. But um, I mean, it was just that was just common. And I just thought he'd grow out of it and we'd be fine. Um but what I didn't know and God did was that he comes from a legacy of alcoholics and mm. destructive. And, um, and so he actually beat me up when I was pregnant with my oldest son and I left at that point and, um, I stayed separated. I never lived with him again. And I told God, I said, look, um, I made a commitment, you know, if you want me to stay in this marriage for the next 40 years, that's what I'll do. But if you can find it in your mercy 
uh, grace and mercy, please deliver me from this vow. And um, so we separated in July of 01, and it was February of 03 when God told me that he had delivered me um, out of that relationship. And I pursued divorce. Um, but God is funny because I hadn't learned my lesson yet. And um, he called me into my marriage with my late husband. He, he passed away in December of 14. Um, we were married for 10 and a half years and I prayed against him. I was like, God, I will take anybody on the face of the planet, but Jay Jordan. <laughs> um, so Jay also was in the punk scene with, um, with us in the nineties. And he actually hated my guts because I was a Christian. He hated God. He hated Jesus. He hated Christians and his whole life goal was to OD in new Orleans on his 21st birthday Mm. and God had a different story and he got baptized on his 21st birthday in new Orleans. Wow. Wow. And so indeed he did die, but he died to himself and becoming a Christian was like the worst thing that ever happened to him. Um, I always thought that was so funny because like I grew up as a Christian. So that concept was like so foreign to me, but he had to realize like it forced him to recognize all the sin in his life. Right. It forced him to recognize like all this nastiness in himself that he had to rinse out. And um, anyway, so fast forward, I guess we about five years after he got saved or whatever, we ran into each other. And we started hanging out. We started a ministry um, in town. And I had no interest in him. But he was dating me from the (laughs) get-go. And God really just turned my heart toward him. And um, we got married in June of 2004. We got pregnant three weeks after we got married. Um, which was very traumatic for me. I told you I had been abused mm-hmm. in my first pregnancy. So to be pregnant again was like terrifying for me. And um, he ended up relapsing in 05. So we had our daughter in April of 05. And then he started, he had a relapse by the end of that year and used all of 2006. And um It was through that the church we were attending at the time um, had a group called Serenity that was um, basically Al-Anon based off the 12 steps with Mm -hmm. scriptures. So if you have like a life recovery Bible, um, it will give you the 12 steps with scriptures associated to them. And so that's what we used. And that was like the first time I realized my contribution to the, um, the cycle of addiction and abuse cycles and how codependency plays into that. And it was like, you know, like totally just blew my mind, um, that I played a role in all of it. You know, I was doing the right thing, right? But I was such a controlling codependent. I felt like if I called him 50 times while he was away from the house, certainly he wouldn't use drugs. If I kept him on the phone every second he was away from the house, he wasn't Mm. going to use. If I managed and controlled everything that he would stop using. And it was through this group um, and the support from these people that really helped me set hard boundaries. And ultimately um, I kicked him out of the house and the strongest boundary after that was he was no longer allowed to see me or the children outside of like a public place. And he loved his kids. I mean, loved his kids. He could not live without his kids. So Um, About two weeks after that hardest boundary, 
was put into place, he decided to go to rehab. Mm. And those were the first times in my life I had set boundaries, I guess, before, but that was the first time going back to the word intentional. I set intentional boundaries, things that were set. It didn't have anything to do with him. I couldn't control him. I couldn't change him. Right. It had everything to do with what was safe for me and for the kids. Yes. And, and it was, it was like empowering, right? Like it, it was like, wow, I've been able to manage some of the chaos. Like I'm not stopping the chaos because my husband's in chaos, but I'm managing some of the chaos in my life. And so, um, that was like just the very, very beginning of God helping me to understand. And then the beauty of boundaries is that it takes a lot of self-reflection. Yes. And as I self-reflect more and more, my boundaries become clearer. My boundary, I more understand what is safe for me and what isn't. So going back to boundaries being about you, it's about your ability to self-reflect. It has very little to do with others around you. Right. Wow. I, first, I love I love hearing other people's stories because it makes everything come more to life, right? Yeah. And as you're talking to me, I'm thinking about some of my listeners who are have experienced some of, I mean, I've, I get the emails and the, the letters that have experienced some of the exact same things. And isn't it great? I mean, when God can take such a hard time in your life, because what people don't, as you eloquently tell your story, there's a lot of pain that came with that okay. to get to that, you know, but now you're able to share that and allow God to turn that around to use for his glory. And that's what boundaries help us to do. Correct. That, that they help us in, in being that person that we want to be. And it's, they're kind of, they help with our goals in our lives. And you can't, you can't get anywhere without goals, right? I mean, you can, but it's life taking you somewhere that you, you may not want to go. And so right. this is, you know, trying to be more intentional and purposeful in our lives so that we can be a better version of ourselves yes. with this. And so I love your story with that because I, I know that one, it takes a lot to share your story Two, um, it takes a lot then to put, to, to, to go into obedience with God, because when we go into obedience with God, we're usually going out of our comfort zone. And so when you, I hear you talking about, you had to set these healthy boundaries. I can feel the fear coming up in myself a little bit too, the anxieties, because uh, when you set up these boundaries for the first time and they're tested, we get a little nervous. That's right. You know, we, the enemy wants us to doubt ourselves a little bit, doubt that we're hearing God truthfully, that we're doing the right things truthfully. Cause like you said, you know, with your, your husband, he loved his kids, but you had to set a certain boundary there because it was what was the right thing to do yeah. and not always doing the right things feel good. Don't always give us peace. But later down the road, we'll see the return on that obedience with it. So I thank you for sharing that story because you have no clue what lives you're touching today just by sharing that. I know because I know some of my listeners, you know, yeah. and divorce is a hard thing in Christianity. You know, when people get divorced, the church has been in the past very unforgiving of that. And in today's world, there's a lot of people who have that are going through that right now. And you can only control what you can control. And if someone wants to divorce you, one, there's nothing you can stop it. Two, we forget that there's biblical reasons for divorce today, too. And people have that right to divorce. You know, my ex-wife, 
uh, I have to tell you, I, it's in my story, but she had every right to divorce me. I wasn't living the right life at that time, you know? Yeah. So we have to understand that it's there. Yeah. And so what's important is what do we do now? It's setting those boundaries. Be strong, be diligent in them because it goes to that verse, your adversary, the devil is seeking to destroy you. And that's why God gave you those boundaries was to protect you from the enemy who wants to take you out. And so for some of my listeners who are listening today that may be going through divorce, going through hardships, going through addiction, recovery, uh, understand that in the seasons, these boundaries that God is placing in you, some of our boundaries may not, they may just be for a season. Right. You know, they may just be seasonal boundaries. Um, but for whatever reason, God is putting those boundaries. Trust the process. That's correct. Because a lot of times we don't, people, we live in that, we want immediate result world today. We want to see an immediate result of how this is working. And that's, that's not going to happen nine out of 10 times, you know? So what we need to understand that boundaries are going to build a long-term investment in our future and having a better life and you may not see it now and you may not understand it now but that's okay god you know god's ways are not our ways and we have to i have to remember that all the time this is not you know because if god would listen to me stephanie i'd have everything straight like that you know but (laughs) god you know he's got his you know, imagine he's got his own way and it it tends to be not tends. It's always better than what I had planned out, yeah. you know, because I have learned too that those hard times were important for me to go through because That's those exactly right. down moments and those tear jerking moments were some of the times that made me the strongest. And I have grown more from my failures sometimes and I have my success. You know, the beautiful thing with God is sin is our only boundary with between us and God. And when we have Jesus, he just annihilates that boundary and gives us full access to God. And so the beauty is, is when we let sin, when we focus on our sin and we let sin be our our life and our marker, we are creating that boundary between us and God. God is not creating that boundary. That's great. And we need to know that like God wants free and full access to us all the time, which is why he sent Jesus to annihilate any boundary sin could create, you know? And, um, but I think it is important that we acknowledge the sin in our lives, call it out for what it is and repent from it and so that you can get the fullness and freeness of forgiveness and then set those boundaries around yourself to help protect you in that same way and it's like over time the synchronicity of that creates beautiful things out of mess you know yeah and it's and it's God doing that because he because there's no there's no boundary between us and him. All of heaven is at our disposal. Everything we are mm. fellow heirs with Christ, right? So everything Christ has is ours as long as we are not creating a boundary between us and God. That's that is so great. I love that. I, I resonate what you say because you know I been on a 15 year journey of restoration and that's where this podcast came from and i found that along the way the hardest part was for me forgiving myself and yes. forgiving and and i was hanging on to the sin i was hanging and not that i was partaking still in the sin but right. the shame and the guilt and all the other stuff that comes with it i was not letting it go and people don't let me tell you tell my audience 
this getting together today was not easy. We were, me and Stephanie were supposed to do a podcast earlier, but I had a family emergency that took place and I wasn't able to do the broadcast that day. So uh, we fast forward another month and uh, we're, me and my wife are traveling back. We got here by the skin of our teeth. Stephanie's having computer issues. I'm having computer issues. My computer crashed. I have a new one coming in any day. Uh, and But I find that in those moments, these are going to be the best podcasts yeah. because the enemy is fighting overtime, but God is stronger. So even though Stephanie's uh, computer's not working, her phone's working. And I loved it because she had the right spirit with, let's make it work this way, you know, because the enemy did not want us to have this. I want to bring you back. We're running out of time, but I want to bring you back because I think it's going to be another 30 minute conversation. I want to talk with you again about forgiveness. If you wouldn't mind coming on here, I would love to talk to you. And, and in between that, I'm going to order your book, Believing in Boundaries, and I'm going to be reading that. And I want to have a better talk with you. But I want to reach out to my customers, to my customers, to my listeners. Stephanie, will you tell them how can they order your book? Um, so I'm on Amazon. You can look up Believing in Boundaries by Stephanie Jordan on Amazon and get the book through there. Um, I'm also on Barnes and Noble, Books a Million. Um, and if I have an event, which I'll be posting, my website is on the way. I'm working on building the website. No, let, awesome. me, let me rephrase that. I am not building it. I'm having somebody build it because, oh my goodness, the time and energy. I yes. Have. So um, the website will be um, believinginboundaries.com. And then also I'll have the stephaniejordan.com. Awesome. And um, so, and I'm going to have an online course that I'm in the process of making with boundaries. So that's going to be available on the website. Um, so right now you can get me on Facebook um, at on my author page, Stephanie Jordan and the Stephanie Jordan and on Instagram, um, the Stephanie Jordan. Okay, perfect. Well, I saw where it was on Amazon. Great reviews already, too. And so I want to, you know, reading is so important. First off, I, I was not a reader. I am a reader now. And let me tell you, everyone, this is this will be a good read. I'm going to encourage you guys, get the book, read it, so that when I bring Stephanie back, you can, we can all have the same conversation. But I want to talk more with you coming back. Um maybe in a month here where we can talk on forgiveness. And that gives me time. Everyone, let's go grab our Amazon account. Let's go order our book today and let's get it. Let's read it. And um, then let's have a conversation about this. This Stephanie, thank you so much for today. This has been a great topic. Um, I can't, just listen. I can't wait to read your book too and to mark it all up. I, I used to get digital books, but I really like a good book where I can go in and highlight it and find truth uh, because this really focuses in um, what I'm looking for in my life when I'm saying I want to be more intentional and I need to be a little better on my boundaries. And I'm, I'm way better than what I was at one time, yes. but I know this will help tremendously with it. So once again, thank you so much for being on our show today. I appreciate that. Thank you and for having me. I've had such a good time. And to my listeners out there, until next time, I'm just going to ask you guys, keep being intentional. We'll talk to you later. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm.